Hallelujah, brethren. God is good. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome. Let us pray, dedicating ourselves into the hands of the Almighty God. Father God in heaven, you are our Father, and we know that you are interested in our affairs because you are the one who put us here. Pray the Lord, you continue doing much more in us, and so that we shall be able to also do much more here in our situation. Continue being our Father, O God, and our keeper and protect and provider in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, you are welcome. I appreciate you very much that we always read it together, think together, pray together, and we appreciate the avenues that are used to deliver this message. Thank you, everyone that is actually behind this program. So actually we deliver it so that it goes to God's people and may God bless the the work of your hands may god bless your efforts the listener may god bless you as well the one preparing for this may god bless you because without you we couldn't this can't go across and so we thank god for this time we continue with our personalities and the man is still at the stage is ezekiel and of course actually this bible cannot complete it we cannot finish it but we pick one by one little things that will encourage, that will energize. And this is the message that is always on my tongue. That actually, as you read the passage, what message do you pick from there? Is it for encouragement? Is it a warning that actually you need to put yourself right? What is it? Is it you know, a counseling session from the scripture? And this is what we are looking for. Is it a prayer? Is it a warning like I've already said? That actually as you deviate, as you go astray, something might happen. Now Ezekiel was a man that had been taken into exile with his fellows. And while he was there, we have already read this, we have already talked about it. That God appointed him to do the work. Many, many things that I could have spoken about him. Just like I have spoken about very many others like Isaiah, like Jeremiah, like Elijah, like, you know, all those, those men in their past. Now, Ezekiel here continues with a message for us as a person that God used and he impacted his generation. Now, my prayer is that as we read about these men, these names, where is my name during my generation? Where is mine? If anybody ever mentioned Eridadi Milton Shisa, will he have something good that will have done for, I mean, to be remembered for? Ezekiel is remembered for something that I just had to put here, just like others that have. Of course, there are also those that are remembered for the bad that they do, for the evils that they do in their society. But our desire, friends, is to do something that's commendable, to, be some, to do something that is loving, that is caring, that is lovable, that is excellent. And that gives credit to us, but also prepares us, like as we are saying, as we are still here on earth, doing something that will be remembered for, but that's something that actually will propel you into the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. And so Ezekiel brings a message here. Hope. Of course, actually, this is not the first time we have talked about it many, many times, and even if it is repeated, it's for purpose of emphasis. But now he comes, Ezekiel chapter 37. We might have heard about it, we might have spoken about it, we might have preached about it, but now this is the time that he's speaking again. Chapter 37, Ezekiel. And we dive into the valley. God actually is a drama that actually is bringing a message to these people. I just want to read. 14 verses very, very quickly. Because actually, it is actually, that's the message. It has to speak for itself. Even if I will have a few things that I will add. Now, the hand of the Lord was upon me. And he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. And set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them. And behold... There were very many on the surface of the valley. And behold, they were very dry. And verse 3. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And so I answered, 
Oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy over these bones. And said to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay snooze upon you, and will and I will cause snooze upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that i am the lord verse 7 so i prophesied that i was commanded and as i prophesied there was a sound and behold a rattling and the bones came together bone to bone and verse 8 and i looked and behold there were snooze on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them but there was no breath in them then he said to me prophesy to the breath prophesy son of man and say to the breath thus says the lord god come from the four winds O breath and breathe on these slain that they may live Verse 10, so I prophesied as he commanded, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. And verse 11, then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are indeed cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from those graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and verse 14, which is final. And I will put my breath within you, and you shall live, and I will place you into your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. Praise the Lord. And this is the point. The final verse. I have said it, I have declared it, and I will do it. And for me, this is what makes the message. And this is the message that actually I bring to you. This time round. Now this man, Ezekiel, remember he was appointed to be a watchman. Remember he was appointed to be a prophet. Remember he was appointed to be a caretaker of God's people, about the people's interests. The people that, remember, the people that had been taken into exile, they were over the other side in the land that was not theirs. And so this one was an acted story. I mean, something that actually is showing what kind of situation that the people of Israel were in. Because look at him, he's saying these bones are the whole house of Israel. Remember he said that in, um, in the portion of scripture as we read. That their situation is dry bones. No hope. Because they're saying our hope is gone. You know, there's nothing that we can see that's, that's ahead. And so as God speaks to Ezekiel, I feel within me that actually still speaks to our situations because there are moments when we are completely dry as these dry bones. When you feel everything is gone, everything is hopeless. So Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 1 to 4, 14, God's power, talk about God's power to recreate, God's power to resuscitate. And these are the terms that actually they use, resuscitate, recreate, restore, revive, renew. Pray the Lord. And I, for one, my point that I'm making is, may God do the same in this life. And may God do the same in your life, in your family, and things like that. So, God is power to recreate. God is power to resuscitate. God is power bringing back that which is um, lost. Or rather, you may say that actually something that may be seemingly dead. 
So it was about the rebirth of the Israelite nation. God was actually showing them that time is coming, that the hopeless situation that they were in would be no more. Pray the Lord. And so, so this could be something that actually God is still say, saying to any situation, as long as we avail ourselves, we are in his presence. Thankfully, the bones were there. Pray the Lord. And thankfully, none of any pieces of a bone was, was lost. All of them were there. Because actually when he prophesied, the Bible says, bone to bone, joint to joint. I just imagine the head bone comes, the ankle bone comes, the wrist bone comes, the rib comes, whichever bone in its right place. Pray the Lord, right place. And I pray that actually God will fix our situations and fix them well. Bone to bone. You know, where it belongs. Sometimes life scatters us. Sometimes life scatters me. And I feel all the bones are scattered. The skull is there. The wrist bone is there. The ankle bone is there. The knee bone is there. The back is, you know, scattered. The scapula. I remember those we were talking, we, we read about types of bones. The t it's my t blood, the, 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 those ones. All of disappeared. Gone, scattered all over. Not disappeared, but scattered. But now remember, pray the Lord, that God orders Ezekiel to, pro to prophesy and these bones are recollected, these bones are rearranged, these bones are brought back. Now I pray, pray the Lord that God is fixing something in our situation. Pray the Lord that God fixes something. God fixes you. God fixes, you know, the, the scattered life and pick up the broken pieces and bring them together. I remember the song that we used to sing in the scripture union many years back. Pick up the broken pieces and bring them to the Lord. Pick up the broken pieces and bring them to the Lord. He will put them back together and make your life complete. And make your life complete. Pray the Lord. So Ezekiel here is showing that God can make life complete. So have you ever faced a situation that is seemingly impossible? Have you ever faced a situation that seems like this valley? And I've just remembered that life in the valley is not always palatable life. When you're deep down in the valley, the bones were in the valley, low, down, there. Now, what comes back to my mind is when Goliath, the giant, threatened the Israelites, David comes, the little boy. Of course, you remember the story. But the Bible talks about valley situation there. That they were down in the valley and day and night, day by day, Goliath would come and ridicule the people of Israel, shouting at them, look at them, look at them. Now, friends, there are situations that come and shout at us, ridicule us. And now I pronounce in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that that situation should come to an end. Like the story, the restriction of the dry bones came to an end. The time comes when the situation comes to an end and God fixes you. In the valley, Goliath ridiculed the people, shouted at the people, you know, scared the people. But one day, salvation came. And David came with one simple stone and the giant was no more. Pray the Lord. And so we pray that actually even the dryness here of the dry bones, that God will one day, one time, whichever situation that it is, one day, one time, God will answer your situation. So God stood up. Ezekiel. I like the way he did it. He stirred him up to action. How did he do it? He asked him a question. Can these bones live? Friends, when I was reading through, when he was asking, can these bones live? Son of man, can these bones live? In verse 3, can these bones live? It was a question 
That was an awakening question. God desires us to, to respond to our impossible situations. You and I, our impossible situation. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the impossible situation just like Ezekiel. Look at the dry bones. Dry. Scattered. All over. For heaven's sake, nobody would ever imagine that actually these bones could do anything. Could come back to life. There are situations, there's a situation that you can look at and say, mm -mm, this is beyond the repair. But listen to me, can these bones live? So maybe God, God is asking you, can you, can this situation go away? Now, situations that seem impossible, situations that seem not going, situations that seem out of hand, situations that seem, mm -mm. and that one is an, you know, you, it's an, it's an imaginable, that's true, girl. anything is unsurmountable. Anything that seems beyond your imagination. I've ever been in situations like that. And maybe even now. But God is God. Pray the Lord. God is God. Illnesses. It can be an insurmountable situation. A situation that actually think it, it is that bad. Dates. Amavanja. Loans. Those things are devastating lives. You finish this loan, you are calling for a top up. You finish this one, you go for a top up. If life becomes tied there, this, when will I ever come out of this? You can also have maybe that's one, that's those are others, but you can, you can also be in a family that seems to be impossible family husband, wife, children, this are children there, mama there, the husband there, everything is this array in the in the family, and which seems to be an impossible, and I've seen this happen many, many times. Pray the Lord for anyone whose family that is in one piece. Pray the Lord for one whose job, work, that is one piece. Pray the Lord for a situation that is going on fairly well. Pray the Lord. But where there are situations that seem like these dry bones is what we're addressing. Because we know actually it is what is at my house may not be at yours. What is at my workplace may not be at yours. Maybe, the, but of course, there are situations that seem to be running smoothly well. We praise God for those ones. But then situations that are not going well, that need to be addressed, are the ones that actually this passage is addressing. Pray the Lord. And so I'm, I'm actually conscious about that. So you are required. What is required in any situation? Pray the Lord. What is required in your situation? If it is a situation that is a dry bone situation, is the hand of God that carried Ezekiel divine encounter that empowered Ezekiel divine presence that surrounded Ezekiel is what you need is what you need is what I need is what I need so with God's hand upon us pray the Lord great things happen sure basing on because of the evidence is here this scripture here is what shows that God is encounter, I mean, encountering God's hand, God's hand upon, upon you. Great things happen. And I'm very sure that great things happen when God's hand is in a situation. The dry bone situation, God's hand is what changed the whole thing. Dry bones represent hopelessness. Any hopeless situation. Any situation that seems hopeless, completely hopeless, and you think that this one is beyond repair, God's hand works upon it. Dreams, plans, 
programs, name them, that have been shattered. You said something, it's all gone. It's all gone. It's all gone. Seems to have gone. Trusting God, believing God, looking up to God, His divine intervention. And we pray that just as He has done it, He did it for Ezekiel. Just as, you know, when you remember the, the story of the, of the three young men who were tied, you know, the furnace was being prepared. They were being tied, made hotter, hotter, hotter. The furnace being taken, thrown in. Divine intervention, pray the Lord. That's, what, that's how it works. And that's why it is called a miracle. That's why it is called a wonder working. A wonder working of God. Because something that seems impossible, when God intervenes, then you say, hey, you open your eyes wide and say, hey, how did it happen? But it has happened and praise the Lord. That actually God is saying that I'll open your graves and I'll bring you out of your graves. It is I, the Lord, that I've spoken, I've said it, and I will do it, pray the Lord. This brings a smile on my face that when he promises, he will do it. And this, when we need to position, to position ourselves. So the power of God is word, which is spoken. The power of God is word. Remember, God telling Ezekiel, prophesy, prophesy, proclaim, proclaim, speak out, speak out to the situation. And I pray for you that you will speak to your situation, you will shout at your situation, and God will hear you. God will hear me speaking to a situation. So God is spoken one is powerful. Remember creation story in Genesis. And God said, let there be, and there was. Let there be, and there was. Let there be, and there was. Pray the Lord. And everything that God saw, said, and did was good, was good, was good, and it was pleasing to the eye. I like doing work, looking back, and feeling good about what I've done. Do it. You look back, you look around. It feels good when you know it has been well done. So I encourage everyone to do work well done. Sweep and sweep well done. Clean and clean well done. Prepare your books. Prepare your books. Work well done. God's word does work. And may God continue working in you. May God's word continue recreating, restoring, resuscitating you and your family and your job. So God can also ask you if your situation can change. And this is important. God can also ask Erida, the military Shisa, can your situation change? Now it is upon the response that I'm going to give that will determine the outcome. It will depend on your response. Because Ezekiel, God, you know. Look at what he was sure that God knew what he was going to do. And I also, I'm also sure that God knows what he's going to do in our life, in your life. And so not that God can bring life into a hopeless situation. God can bring joy into that hardened, sorrowful life. God can bring back life. Pray the Lord. God can bring back joy. Pray the Lord. God can bring back peace. In that peaceless heart, God can resuscitate it. God can bring it back. God can bring. So, prophesy word to your family. Prophesy word to your finances. There are situations when you feel really things are not shifting, things are not moving. Prophesy word. Speak. Marriage, how is it going? Speak and trust God. But actually, let us also take it that actually when it is spoken to, the bones must listen. So as we said, we are going to speak about, speak to a situation, speak to the finances, speak to our marriage that is about to disintegrate. The marriage must listen. Finances must listen. The situation must listen. The bones, the dry bones must hear. So we pray that God will enable us, that the dry bones will hear, the health will hear. If our bodies are not well, the bodies must hear. Those that are aching must listen. 
the finances that are not that that are elusive must listen and come. The health, we pray that actually God will when the word speaks, these things will listen. And may God can do it. God can do it. Micah chapter 7, verse 7. Pray this way. That but as for me, I watch in hope for the Lord. I wait for my salvation by my, my Savior. I wait for my Savior. My God will heal me. And may God heal your stretching. May God heal your hopelessness. May God heal your finances. May God heal your marriage. May God heal your job. May God heal you. May God resuscitate you. May God restore you. May God renew you. May God restore you. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And all of us say, Amen. And may God do it in the name of the, of the Lord. And be blessed, friends, from now on. Amen. <laughs>